Welcome to Understanding the Times Radio. I know that was a little bit of a different introduction. Because we're having an Understanding the Times meeting coming up on January 19th, that's a Thursday, I am talking to our special guest for that evening, Pastor Brandon Holthouse, for the hour here. And we're going to hit a number of issues, I hope. And I say that because the material is extensive and I don't want to shortchange this material. And that is we're, we're going to start out talking about a phenomenon that I've referenced on Understanding the Times Radio before, the attack on believers from dark forces. And I mean serious attack, harassing attack, so blatant that you have to ask what on earth has unleashed these forces on some people. We can call it what it is. It's demonic. And too many solid Christians are reporting incidents where they are harassed and more. They're not hallucinating. They're not dreaming. They're not imagining any of this. It's a very real experience. How do we fight back? This is obviously end time escalation. It says in 1 Peter 5, 8, be alert and of sober mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. That someone is you. That someone is your loved ones, and it's happening. And this is not just being reported by marginal Christians. It's being reported by those who are truly living for the Lord. It's most definitely stepping up here, in, as I already referenced in these last days. And what makes this worse is the fact that most churches will not deal with it. And so people remain confused, unsure what is happening, much less how to fight it. So joining me for the hour, Pastor Brandon Holthouse, you've heard him many times, Rock Harbor Church, Bakersfield, California. We'll give contact a little bit later. Brandon, welcome back to the program. Thanks, Jan, for having me again. Good to be with you. And I watch a lot of your updates, and you have done a almost a 50-part series on this very topic, which is why yeah. I'm talking to you about it. Okay, why the acceleration? Do we just simply sum it up, it's the last days, or is there more to it? That's the big ticket item right there is, of course, we're in the last days. And because we're in the last days, the satanic world seems to be ramping up things. And I believe it's for deception, and I believe it's for providing excuses for the rapture, it's providing excuses for the supernatural events that are going to happen in the tribulation. And then the big target is Christians, because we're the only ones giving the truth out about what's getting ready to happen. We're the ones telling people that we're going to a one world government and the Antichrist and the mark of the beast. So Christians now who are doing those kinds of things in the trenches with us, giving the truth out, are now being attacked. And that's something we have never seen before. One of the things when people would have paranormal activity in earlier days, we would say that, well, you're probably dabbling in the occult, they're around somebody in the occult, or they're marginal Christians, or something's happening that they're not where they need to be spiritually. But now, the reports that we're getting from our online audience, even here locally, is these are solid Philadelphia remnant believers who are mature, and they're in the trenches trying to get the word out. And they are now being attacked. And I think that's where this is a nuance that we have never seen before to where they're trying to silence us, trying to push us back and make us afraid to say anything. So now we're having solid believers not involved in the occult, not doing anything they shouldn't be doing, not in any addictions or sins, but just serving the Lord at a higher capacity in this environment. And they are being harassed. We quickly need to add these entities and we've mentioned this on air before, can quickly be chased away with the name of Jesus. But I hate to say it, but sometimes they do come back because these are absolutely harassing spirits. And sometimes we invite these entities into our home by bringing home certain objects. And I think there are things that believers, and they're hanging on to them naively, innocently, need to get out of their house because some of these items are adding to the paranormal atmosphere in the home and possibly encouraging these spirits, demons, entities, whatever you want to call them, to come into the home or into the life of a solid Bible-believing Christian. Why don't you name some things they need to get out of their house? What people need to do when they start having these occurrences is the first thing we have them check is the objects in the home. I said, have you inherited anything from family members that might be 
somewhat involved in a false religion or something. I had somebody tell me that their family were Chinese and they had some these Chinese boxes and little different things. But when you start observing what this was, it was occultic. It was associated to worshiping ancestors and they were having paranormal activity. And we said, you got to get rid of that. Other people with Native American backgrounds have things passed on to them from their family. And you look at that Native American necklaces, dream catchers, stuff like that. You have to get rid of that because that's involved in the occult. Then we even had somebody tell me that a friend of theirs went to India and gave them a little elephant statue. All of a sudden, they started having all kinds of harassment in the house, being cussed out, being laughed at, being yelled at. And I said, did you bring any objects? And they said, well, a friend of ours brought this little white elephant from India. I said, that's an idol. That's actually a Hindu god. I go, destroy that. Well, that's what brought in the demonic attack. So sometimes people's kids, teenagers, are wearing uh, cultic paraphernalia or actually have books on witchcraft and stuff that the parents are not aware of, and they bring that in the house. Objects can be a big deal, and a lot of times you have to look at what you've inherited from other people and the gifts that they have given you, or even yourself of what you bought. Some of those objects are idols and can cause that. Pastor Billy Crone has addressed this. Of course, he lived the life of the paranormal for a number of years before he got saved. He speaks and teaches on this very frequently. This is a short clip of Billy Crone talking about what you and I are talking about. The Bible warns about this uh, spiritual realm and specifically occult practices and the occult behavior. Uh, Old Testament, New Testament, but specifically the Bible tells us what kind of a society is going to arise on the whole planet during the seven year tribulation that Jesus said, Matthew 24, is going to be the worst time in the history of mankind. The wrath right? of the Lamb. Right. Mm. And you don't want to be in that time frame and praise God through Jesus. You don't have to be. Right. But he tells us an aspect of what is going to be that kind of society that's the worst in the history of mankind. Well, it's all about the occult. Wow. And this is in the trumpet judgments in the seven year tribulation. And it tells you here's just one. One slice of the state of mankind during that time frame. It says this, the rest of mankind, verse 20, Revelation 9, the rest of mankind that were not killed by these plagues still did not repent of the work of their hands. All right, well, what were they involved in? Watch this. They did not stop worshiping demons. Mm. Wow. What? The, yeah. And, and the, the context is global. Right, And then it goes on and says, and then they did not stop worshiping demons and idols of gold, silver, bronze, stone, wood, idols that cannot see or hear or walk. Watch this. Nor did they repent of their murders, their magic arts, uh, pharmacia there, uh, sometimes translated as witchcraft or sorcery, uh, and their sexual immorality or theft. So what's that sound like? Mm. Sounds like today. today. Yes. Right? And so really what we're seeing is this is not only going on. It shouldn't, on the one hand, as a born-again Christian who reads the Bible, what a concept, uh, shouldn't be surprised. I don't condone it, but we're not surprised because this is what's going to permeate the planet yeah. and it's going to culminate in the seven-year tribulation and with the help of Hollywood, all kinds of secular entities, we're seeing a whole new generation that if they don't receive Christ their Savior and repent of this stuff, uh, then guess what? They're going to be a part of this wicked society that's full of the occult. So, Brandon Holthouse, it would be safe to say, I think, we're seeing a setup for this now that will blossom then in the tribulation. Absolutely. In this setup, what's happening is a spiritual vacuum has been left in the world now. Now that the forces of evil are working to push Christianity out of society, not only here in America, but around the world, it leaves this vacuum. And what's filling this vacuum is pagan spirituality, worship of the creation rather than the creator. What starts happening is they start manifesting the practices of paganism or the occult. And so now we see witchcraft at an all-time high. We see Satanism at an all-time high. And we see even in the church now, in the great apostasy of the church, practices from the occult, like centering prayer and prayer labyrinths and yoga, and this being totally accepted in the church. Having services where people want a deeper experience with God through feelings and start having physical manifestations, all of that is from the occult. Oh, I'm so and glad you brought that up, Brandon. It's so true. The whole centering prayer, walking the labyrinth, all of that. So many churches going through all that naively, ignorantly, if they only knew. And those kinds of practices draw demonic harassment. So let's say somebody gets into prayer circles and people start practicing that. You're going to draw demonic harassment from that because that is the open door for them. I don't care what term you put on it, whether you say Christian, yoga, or whatever you want. 
it's still pagan. That gives them an entry point, a foothold, according to Paul in Ephesians 4.27, to where they can now establish a beachhead on you and then start harassing you. It's not going to be pleasant when they start harassing you, but they're going to have the ability and the right to do that to you if you practice this stuff. You're listening to Understanding the Times Radio. I'm Jan Markell, Brandon Holthouse, Bakersfield, California, my guest. And if you listen frequently, you know we touch on this topic on a regular basis because as we speak, it's growing exponentially. We did a program on the paranormal three, four weeks ago. Jason Carlson, Joel Rishi, and Mark Henry. So I feel we can't stress it enough. And again, let me repeat my introduction by saying, because so many strong believers are being harassed, and they can't figure out why. What on earth have they done, they ask, that seems to be inviting these entities into their lives and into their homes? Brandon, talk to us for a moment. Actually, this happened to me. It's 30 years ago now. And in your messages, you have talked about people with sleep paralysis. It's a terrifying ordeal. Good people going through it. Folks, you don't have to be a practicing occultist to experience these things. I experience sleep paralysis, but talk to us a little bit about it just because it's increasing and it's physical harassment, entities you can feel and see. I even had it early on in my ministry. What I want to say to everybody before I explain what it is, is if you've had this experience, it doesn't mean that you're involved in the occult. If Jan and I could have these experiences, in my situation, they were trying to prevent me from helping somebody get out of Satanism. And that's why I was being harassed. So I want you to know that if you've had sleep paralysis, it doesn't mean you're involved in the occult. It means that you're probably doing something they don't want you to do. Sleep paralysis happens where you're asleep, but then something else happens where you recognize that you're awake, but you can't move your body. Then you feel a pressure on your chest and that something's holding you down. And you will intuitively know as a believer to try to get the name of Jesus out or call for help from him. And it will be very difficult for you to physically get the name of Jesus out of your mouth. And you'll say it in your head, But when you try to physically do it, you will not be able to do it. And it takes time. But eventually, if you can get the name of Jesus out physically, it stops. That's what we see involved in the occult, that once you say the name of Jesus and his authority, it stops the whole event. But the person will struggle to get that name of Jesus out. They call it sleep paralysis in the psychological world, but it's not. It's demonic paralysis. They're the ones holding you down, and they can do a lot more than that. They can appear in front of your bed, watch you sleep, Yes. and usually they appear in a dark shadow. You'll have a figure of a, it looks like a man, but it's a dark shadow. Sometimes they appear as animals. To little kids, they appear as black sheep. Some people actually just see an older man with like a trench coat, and he looks ancient. So sometimes he'll appear as humans, but this is real deal stuff, and it's happening more than ever. I have staff members that they have had this done to them, and they're not involved in the occult. That's why we say this is happening more than ever. I know this is not an exaggeration, the things you're saying. I have a former staff member who's been going through this with an entity standing right next to her in her bedroom, and it's repeated. It happens over and over. Now, you encourage people not to be terrified. Now, that's hard to not be (laughs) terrified, Brandon. I've not had an entity stand by me, but if I did, I'm not so sure I'd be very calm. You're right. What they're trying to do is make you afraid. So that's why I say that is because that's one of their tactics is to make you afraid and to back you off on what you're doing. The way you overcome that fear is to know why they're doing it to you and that you have the authority under the Messiah and you're protected by the Messiah and you have the word of God to protect you. You're called not to fear, but yet it can strike fear into you. I mean, I've been in front of people that were demon-possessed, and the hair in the back of your neck will stand Mm -hmm. up. These creatures are evil, and they want to kill you and destroy you, but they can't because you're protected under the authority of the Messiah, according to Hebrews chapter 2. So what are you supposed to do if this is happening? What we take people through is you've got to find the entry point. What is the beachhead, Ephesians 4.27, in which they are operating? And like we talked about, it could be an object, it could be a practice, or it actually could be a person or location or flat-out apostasy. And you have to identify, where is this coming from? Is it coming from a person I'm associated with? Maybe it's a family member. 
Maybe it's a family member that is dead, but still practice the occult, and that stuff has been lingering with you. It could be from the location you're at. You can go into certain cities, and I've done this, that have high occultic activity, and I feel the oppression there. I feel the darkness. I feel a weight and a heaviness around there. We had people that told me they bought a house, and bad things had happened in that house, or it was built over like an ancient graveyard, an Indian graveyard, and they have all kinds of things happening in that house. And I'm like, yeah, because the occult was there. So a lot of times they'll have to move and get away from that because of that location. So you have to discern, where is this happening to me? Is it from an idol? Is it from an object? Is it a person? Is it location? Or is it because of my immaturity? That goes into the sin of the individual. If you'd like to reach Pastor Brandon, you can do so through his website, rockharborchurch.net, rockharborchurch.net. He also has a church finder on that website where they have pinpointed some solid remnant churches throughout not just America, but other parts of the world that they've been working on for a long time now. The most frequent email this ministry gets, folks, is where can I find a church? And I really can't help you other than to direct you to something that Brandon's church has done. And they've searched far and wide for solid churches, rockharborchurch.net, find the church locator there. Brandon, you gave a message in a conference talking about things we're talking about this segment. And granted, they're on the creepy side, though. Can't run from it because it's reality. Right. And they took your message down. The very thing believers need to hear about to protect themselves, to fight back. The church took it down. Add to that the fact that most churches will not preach about what we're talking about today. So help us understand this. You talk about frustration. You're offering answers and solutions, and the church shut it down pretty amazing, huh? I get invited to speak, and I spoke on other topics, but that one apparently scared the pastor, and they didn't want to be talking about that to their people. And why? It's happening, and why would you withhold that from people? Because at the end of my presentation, I had a string of people lined up to talk to me, telling me, I'm having those occurrences now. How do I get help? At the same time, the pastor doesn't realize the people in his own congregation are having this harassment, and he's not going to address it. He, in fact, takes the information down. This is part of this whole editing thing that we don't want to make people uncomfortable. We want to tell them the nice things. And it goes back to we don't want to talk about eschatology. We don't want to talk about sin. We don't want to talk about death. And we definitely don't want to talk about demons. Those things are happening, and yet the pastors edit that out. I'm beside myself (laughs) to think. And then I want to say, Pastor, did you see the long line of people wanting to talk to me? They all in your congregation told me they're having these experiences, and why aren't you addressing them? One more clip here, Pastor Billy Crone, because what Pastor Crone is saying is complimenting what Brandon Holthouse and I are saying. The enemy is not dumb. You know the word demon, demonion in the Greek, you know what it means? Intelligent ones. Mm-hmm. Demons are very smart. Satan's very smart. Yeah. In fact, they've been, been here for 6,000 years. They know what makes us tick. Mm-hmm. They know strengths, weaknesses. You know, he's, not, he's not dumb. So he goes to the places that has the most influence on people, media, right? Mm -hmm. And then he begins to take over that, and we documented when it got taken over in the 60s uh, by those involved in witchcraft and Satanism. And and he uses that to brainwash people. And like he said, brilliant word, that's what's going on, desensitizing. And now here's what's shocking. I expect the world to do that. I don't condone it, but I expect it because they don't know Christ their Savior. But not in the church. Mm -hmm. Right. Now, why isn't the church talking about it? Because the church is fulfilling another unfortunate prophecy that we're in the last days. Not just the rise of occult behavior, Revelation chapter 9, but Paul told Timothy, here's the state of the church in the last days, that the church will only gather around themselves teachers who will tickle their ears, will turn aside from the truth, sound doctrine, right? And they'll turn aside to myths. Tickle your ears is kenetho in the Greek. It means to desire only that which is pleasant, right? And myths is muthos, stories made up. So how do you know your last days? Yes, in the world, you're going to see a rise of occult behavior, wickedness, what we're seeing today, wars, rumors of wars, famines, pestilence, that's all signs. But in the church, when all you get is only pleasant things and stories made up, you're in the last days. Again, folks, we're having a one-night Understanding the Times event. It's going to be Thursday, January the 19th. Co-hosts would be Pastor Mark Henry and yours truly. Brandon will be our guest for the evening. We do various things that evening from having a short presentation to a panel discussion to questions and answers. 
talking about all sorts of things, present topic plus current events. You can live stream it anywhere in the world at MarkHenryMinistries.com, MarkHenryMinistries.com. If you want to come in person, it is Revived Church, 7849 West Broadway, Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, 55445. You can call the church office there. The nice thing is if you can't do any of that on the 19th, everything is posted to my website, olivetreeviews.org, and then to video or markhenryministries.com. The whole two-hour presentation will be available. Doors open at 6. The program is 7 to 9 p.m. Again, suburb of Minneapolis, but live streamed at markhenryministries.com. Plenty of seating, and Brandon, you deserve some sort of an award for coming from California to Minnesota, middle of January. So please wear a sweater, okay? I will. I'm going to turn into a popsicle over there. You are. Now, how can the listeners, I don't even like to use this word prepare for what we're talking about, because that implies they're going to be a victim, and some of them may be. Obviously, knowing the Word of God would help to fight back against these entities, but how else can they prepare? We talk about putting the full armor of God, but what people don't realize about the full armor of God is that on all those subjects, the armor that's talked about, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, what that really means is that you need to study in proper theology all the subject matter in terms of what does it mean to be righteous. What does it mean to use the shield of faith? And how about the sword of the Word of God? See, it's one thing to say, I put on the full armor of God, and that's unfortunately a very immature way of looking at it. What Paul is trying to say is, you need to know all these subject matters in proper theology backwards and forwards. Mm -hmm. And that's how you actually put on the full armor of God, is you need to know all these subject matters. And every subject you don't know is where you're going to be attacked. So if you don't understand soteriology, if you don't understand how truth is used, or even how to use the sword, most people don't know how to use the sword. Well, the sword is the Word of God, but they don't know how to use it because they don't know it well. So what do you mean, Brandon? Well, the enemy is going to attack you in areas of weakness. And in those areas of weakness, it's because the believer typically doesn't know the truth in that area. And so that's an area of vulnerability. And so that's where they're attacked, and that's where a foothold gets established. So my thing I tell people is you need to do some serious introspection. Look through these subject matters of where you're weak at and then shore them up. And everybody's got to do some introspection. You just can't say, I'm good. That's not sanctification. Sanctification says we work on these issues. The issues you don't work on to whatever degree is the degree where you will be harassed. And that's where it's a discipleship issue. And you also stressed to me that if people are hanging out with folks who may have one tie somehow to the things we're talking about, somebody's close friend, somebody's spouse is looking at a tarot card now and then or a Ouija board or just affiliating with something that's in the dark world, this can rub off on the Bible-believing Christian. Absolutely. I would say in all the things in which you can be harassed from, Number one is the people you're associating with. That's what people don't realize. Okay, well, Bob over here, yeah, I know he goes to psychics and stuff, but he's a good friend of mine. But then all of a sudden they get harassed and they don't realize that your relationship to that person that's involved in the occult opens you up. In the spiritual realm, that is you giving permission to be harassed when you're associating with someone you know that's involved in the occult. So I have people tell me, Brandon, we invited these people over and we had dinner with them. They're relatives of ours. And they were telling us that they do seances and all this other stuff. Okay. And then when they left, we started getting harassed. And I said, yeah, you need to cut that relationship off. Well, this is my cousin. This is my brother. Okay. Do you want to continue to get harassed? So make your decision. And sometimes it's even your adult children that'll do this. And yeah, you're going to bring them over for dinner, but yet your own son, your own daughter is involved in witchcraft. At some point, you're going to have to distance yourself because it's going to affect you. I would say that number one is people you're associating with. When I come back, what I'd like to do is go down a little bit different pathway for the balance of the program, because we've just come out of a momentous year, actually a momentous three years, but 2022 was 
startling in a number of ways. And I'd kind of like to look at some of the incidents that I think were game changers in the last year and will be continuing to be just that going into our new year here. So when I come back, I want to talk about some quite cutting edge issues that both Brandon Holthouse and I are talking about on a regular basis. So some of the material will be new and some of it may be very familiar to you. I'm going to come back very, very quickly. So please don't go away. Let me give a very quick heads up here. Again, I'm asking for a call to action here because all ministries are having copycats on social media. I heard Amir Sarfati talking about it, fake accounts on his social media. And you've heard me warn you that there are at least 500 fake olive tree videos on YouTube. You can help. You can report them to YouTube. If enough of you would do that, take action, report them to YouTube, perhaps these frauds would be shut down. Most of them are from China or from Thailand, and they're doing very dangerous things online. You can always watch our videos on Rumble, on our website, on LightSource. We have a tremendous YouTube audience. It's 179,000 subscribers. And that's how you can tell if you're listening to our channel. All these copycats have 1,000 subscribers or 5,000 viewers. They're still doing an enormous amount of destruction. And I keep hammering at it because some of you are so confused. I don't blame you. I'm not being judgmental here. I'm just trying to clarify. Let's move ahead. And the issue that I'm going to talk about is the green dragon. The green dragon is already here. It's been forming for, for quite a while. But if I want to pinpoint where the green dragon started, I go to Rio de Janeiro in 1992 when they had these earth summits started by the UN. And they, all that time, they had been planning to implement what they're implementing right now. So I call it the Dream Dragon because it's satanic and behind the movement is going green, okay? And so it is a religion, it is a cult. You have to see the background on this because I'm gonna talk about how it impacts you and I today. First thing you have to understand is the Green Dragon is its own religion. This whole thing about going green is religion. Now, what do, you, what do you mean, Brandon? Well, it has its own sin. Do you know what sin is in this religion? It is human beings who are a cancer to the planet. Human beings who are overpopulating the planet, right? So they want to depopulate it. So human beings are the sin, and anthropocentric carbon emissions are the sin as well. Okay? So follow me on this, because it has its own religion. Its salvation is sustainability. Sustainability, you know where that came from? That actually came from China telling the UN what to do to us to, to shut down the West. So sustainability, you've probably heard that term before, right? That's their salvation. And the other salvation is net zero carbon emissions and the reduction of the human population. That's why they're all into reducing human population. They will never tell you flat out, but that's what they want. All right, welcome back. I played that clip. We'll talk about it for a few minutes because I believe the next challenge coming down the pike could include climate lockdowns and a lot of things related to this new religion, the green religion. And I actually do a four times a year magazine, and you can sign up online, folks, at olivetreeviews.org and go to the newsletter. You can call my office. You can get on our mailing list. We have an e-newsletter as well. But the opening article in this magazine for January 2023, can we resist the green dragon in the coming year? I can answer it's a rhetorical question, no. Well, we can resist it, but it's going to invade us one way or another. And I think it's going to be shocking once it really, really hits, I believe, sometime in 2023. Before we move on, I just want to go back and revisit for a moment part one of our programming I have on the line from Bakersfield, California, Pastor Brandon Holthouse, Rock Harbor Church in Bakersfield, rockharborchurch.net. Try to find their church locator there where they have located hundreds of solid churches in various locations, heavily the U.S. Brandon will be our speaker Thursday, January the 19th for our Understanding the Times Pastor Mark Henry and I co-hosts, and no charge. You folks can watch live or on our websites later, markhenryministries.com, live stream at 7 to 9 p.m. Central Time. 
on the 19th. We're going to cover a ton of topics, folks. We're covering 10% of them this hour. Brandon, let's go back to, we were dealing with the spooky world here, first half, and you said to me during the break, look, some people feel that they're being visited, let's say, that some people are being visited. Hey, this is spiritual warfare. We can deal with it. And your point is, you don't have to. No, you don't have to. And unfortunately, because it's not addressed by the church, Christians are out there living with full manifestations. Like I mentioned off air, someone came up to me and said, yeah, I have these apparitions that appear in my room that it's a half of a man and then the legs are a dog. And they're thinking that this is normal spiritual warfare. And I said, that's not normal. That needs to stop and you need to stop that. And they were just living with it. So my admonition to everybody, if you want that to stop, you need to renounce what's happening in the name of Jesus. You need to understand what is the foothold, where is it coming from, and you can be free of that because that's not normal spiritual warfare. When you see manifestations, that is oppression. Typical spiritual warfare deals with influence, where they try to influence you to do something. But oppression, you don't have to live that way. So renounce it. Get rid of the objects, cut the associations off, and move on. And keep renouncing it until it stops in the name of Jesus. Thank you for those words, Brandon. I did a print magazine here very recently for my ministry, and I just want to comment. I wrote a couple of articles, one, as I already said, on the Green Dragon, and then another one was the top prophecy-related stories of 2022 and stories that will affect us going into our new year. Number one, the rise of the World Economic Forum, the cabal and their rush to global government. Two, the stirring up of the spirit of Antichrist. Three, the thinking that government knows best, we should trust it for whatever it recommends, etc. Number four, the rise of the green dragon and the worship of Mother Earth. We're going to stay there for a minute or two. Number five, the race towards central bank digital currency. Number six, the decline of America the rise of radical liberalism and the lack of a world leader. Number seven, Christians are being canceled. Jews are under attack. Number eight, the rise of strong delusion and global deception. In other words, girls can become boys, boys can become girls, etc. Number nine, running amok, apostasy in the church. And number 10, and we covered that first half, the staggering rise of the paranormal and the occult called sorcery in the Bible. So going back to my point on the rise of the green dragon, and I played a clip of you, Brandon, and that was you addressing the same issue, obviously bothering you too. And we've got almost insanity going on all over the world because of this cult. I said we might even see climate lockdowns in 2023. Give me your thoughts on this. There is no doubt you're going to see climate lockdowns. They were truly amazed of the lockdowns that we had prior to this, and they would remark of how well it cleaned up the air and stopped the carbon emissions. So they actually liked the lockdowns. I believe you're right. The lockdowns are coming. Now, I just talked to a guy in England, and he was telling me they're doing lockdowns already in England, and specifically, he said, in Oxford, in that area. And he said, What they have told them that they can do is they can only leave their home a hundred times out of the year. That's between him and his wife. And he says, within a year, I have to plan to go to the grocery store Mm -hmm. and I can't just leave frivolously just because I want to get in my car and drive. In a sense, that's the lockdown, that you can only leave your home a hundred times. That's what's coming. And eventually it'll be less than that. So I don't think it's a hypothetical anymore. They're actually doing it in parts of Europe. I have that in this article I wrote. Oxfordshire City Council yesterday approved plans to lock residents into one of six zones to save the planet from global warming. The latest stage in the agenda is to place electronic gates on the key roads in and out of the city, confining residents to their own neighborhoods. Folks, don't think that's just in Europe. That's very likely coming here. Brent, I want to address, as it concerns this topic, what the church is doing about it, and that's the green agenda. My concern, and I have tracked the National Association of Evangelicals for 30 years, and I wrote this in this article. It's two short paragraphs. How has the church responded? Again, that's to the green dragon. Some 25 years ago, they jumped on the climate change bandwagon. Articles on the website of the National Association of Evangelicals. Again, folks, this isn't the National Council of Churches. 
on the website of the NAE feature a push to recycle and an emphasis on what the Bible says about environmentalism that suggests we are killing the planet. If we only had that power, folks, we don't. They state that, quote, loving the least of these, which is Matthew 25, 40, has climate implications. Okay, it's baloney. I'll conclude here what happened to emphasizing winning the lost while there is still time. That's a question by me. This has been the message of evangelicalism my entire life. Social justice and climate issues are pushing this aside. I would think that the evangelical pulpit would be stating the obvious. God controls the weather and man has very little to do with it. Those were just some of my thoughts. Brandon, as we talk about this green dragon, that the evangelical community, some, not all, are joining the bandwagon. Absolutely. And that brings into one of your other points with apostasy, and you blend this together. And because of the apostasy, the majority of the churches are starting to buy into this green agenda and start practicing Mm -hmm. this green agenda. And one of the ways we start seeing it is telling people what they can eat and what they can't eat. Paul mentions this to Timothy that in the last days, they're going to tell you what you can eat. And they're going to forbid you to eat. And now I think that is attached to this green agenda. Eventually, they're going to virtue signal in the churches, if they already are not, with driving an electric car, going green. So the churches have bought into us. I'll give you an example of how the churches have bought into us. You have people reinterpreting John 3.16. And so a pastor has an invitation as his church. And on the front aisle, he had barrels of dirt. And he used... John 3, 16, for God so loved the world. And instead of referring to that as people, he referred to that as the earth, like ground. So he had these barrels of dirt, and he says, will you guys come up during this invitation and grab a handful of this dirt and commit before God that you're going to do everything to save the planet? That's the apostasy that we're seeing in these churches. And it's like full-blown, and the congregations just go with it. They do. One more clip here, and then I want to move on to a little bit different topic, and that would be, I think the most staggering thing we're going to see in 2023 is digital money is coming, folks, and I believe it'll be here in the new year. And we begin this hour with breaking news out of Geneva, a dire message from climate scientists. They warn unprecedented and even irreversible changes are happening to this planet and say it is beyond any doubt that human activity is to blame. Dominic Valaitis is on this story for us live from London. Dominic, what more can you tell us about the big warnings of this report? Yeah, good morning, Asha. Well, the UN Secretary General, Antonio Guterres, has this morning described today's report from the IPCC as a code red for humanity. It is grim reading. Its authors say climate change is now widespread, rapid and intensifying, that human activity has warmed the climate at a rate unprecedented in at least the last 2,000 years and that some of the changes already set in motion, such as continued sea level rise, will be felt for generations to come. Here's what Friedrich Otto, one of the report's authors, had to say. There there is no denying that some of the impacts are irreversible on on, on centuries, yeah, on timescales of centuries to come. And this is really important um, to, to know also that climate change is a fact it's already happening it's no matter what not going to go away and asha scientists go on to say that unless immediate action is taken to dramatically reduce greenhouse gas emissions then global temperatures will rise indeed they think they will now reach the 1.5 degrees celsius limit set out in the 2015 paris agreement in the next 20 years or so and could possibly even exceed two degrees Celsius by the end of this century. That, the report says, will increase the frequency of extreme weather events unprecedented in the historical record. Folks, I got to tell you, there are some Minnesotans, starting with me, that are cheering for some global warming, okay? We're tired of 50 below zero wind chills. Really tired of it. Brandon, you want to make one more comment, then we're going to move to another topic. As believers, we already promised that we can't affect the environment. Genesis 8.22 says, While the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and all day and night shall not cease. If we believe the Lord, that's what he says. We will not be able to affect the environment. And just by the way, 
the whole climate narrative is a false narrative. It doesn't have the facts. It doesn't have the evidence. So they're perpetrating a lie. And why? For control leading to a one world government. That's true. And we have talked here extensively on Understanding the Times Radio. And folks, that is what you're listening to. I'm Jan Markell, your host. I have on the line from Bakersfield, Pastor Brandon Holthouse, Rock Harbor Church, rockharborchurch.net. He's our winter speaker on Thursday, January 19th, Revived Church in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. You can live stream that 7 to 9 Central Time, Central Time, MarkHenryMinistries.com. No charge if you want to come on out to the church in Brooklyn Park, and we have plenty of seating, so don't worry about that. So maybe enough said on this topic. We did a program on it a month ago on COP27, which was in Sharm El Sheikh. The only reason I'm bringing it up again, now we're in the new year, and my concern is what we saw for COVID was a trial run for what they want to do as it concerns climate lockdowns, etc. Brandon, I am concerned that something on the horizon here in the new year, almost with certainty, and folks, I've played this clip before, but it says it all, and that is at the world government meeting, this would have been some months ago now, they're openly talking about, folks, this is coming anytime. What underpins a world order is always the financial system. Mm. I, I was very privileged. My father was an advisor to Nixon when they came off the gold standard in 71. And so I was brought up with a kind of inside view of how very important the financial structure is to absolutely everything else. And what we're seeing in the world today, I think, is we are on the brink of a dramatic change where we are about to, and I'll say this boldly, we're about to abandon the traditional system of money and accounting and introduce a new one. And the new one, the new accounting, is what we call blockchain. It means digital. It means having an almost perfect record of every single transaction that happens in the economy, which will give us far greater clarity over what's going on. It also raises huge dangers in terms of the balance of power between states and citizens. In my opinion, we're going to need a digital constitution of human rights if we're going to have digital money. Uh, but also, this new money will be sovereign in nature. Most people think that digital money is crypto and private. But uh, what I see are superpowers introducing digital currency. The Chinese were the first. The U.S. is on the brink, I think, of moving in the same direction. The Europeans have committed to that as well. Well, good for Pippa Mulgram. At least she said we're going to need a new constitution of human rights if we get digital money. Would I be right, Brandon, in saying this would be the ultimate in spying on humanity? It's the ultimate surveillance system. There's no doubt because they're going to attach to it our digital ID. That includes not only your banking, but your medical and mm -hmm. your ESG score and your comings and goings. This is a setup for what the Antichrist is going to use in the tribulation. And we're watching it unfold in front of our very eyes. And I agree with you. This is coming in the near future. They are now test piloting the digital currency. It started back in December, and it's a 12-week program. So they're still in the middle of this right now in January. And they're test piloting it with some of the major banks in New York City of whether or not they have the infrastructure and the ability to introduce this to society. They suspect that they might be able to introduce it sometime in 2023 or at the latest 2024. So it's coming. Yeah, I believe it's a freight train that's going to be out of control here just about any time. And I'm not sure how to encourage listeners and believers anywhere how to deal with this, because once it comes, our way of life is just going to change dramatically. It will. And that's where people ask me, what do I do? And I say, you know what? We're going to have to be like the children of Israel, mm -hmm. and we're going to get up against the beach, and we can't go north, we can't go south, and Pharaoh's bearing down on us. We're going to have to wait and see what God does to part the Red Sea for us, because yeah. this traps us. There's no way out of the system. We're just going to have to wait and see what the Lord opens up, and maybe there's going to be a way of escape. Well, maybe the rapture The does. rapture would be the greatest way of escape. In the meantime, Christians, again, this goes back to my list of 10 top stories, Christians in the last year, and will be in the coming year, are being canceled. We're watching Jews under enormous physical attack. You can't even wear a Jewish symbol in New York City. 
Sam Brownbeck had a fascinating experience, rather ominous. He's with the National Committee for Religious Freedom, and he needed a bank account, and he went to J.P. Morgan Chase, and here's what happened. When the National Committee for Religious Freedom, headed by former U.S. Senator and Religious Freedom Ambassador Sam Brownback, needed a bank account, they went to J.P. Morgan Chase. After only a few weeks, they learned their account had been closed. I went in to make a deposit at a branch here in Kansas uh, about three or four weeks after we'd opened up the account, I think, and the teller there said uh, that account's been closed. I go... What? I uh, said, so, yeah, it's, uh, that account's been closed. Your funds will be being sent to you in a couple of weeks. And then later they came back and said, well, if you'll disclose who gives uh, more than 10% of your funds to you and your criteria for supporting candidates as a 501c4, we'll consider reopening up the account. Brownback says he received an apology letter, but still doesn't know why the bank made the decision. We want some real answers as to why this happened is, you know, and normally what I found is that most people just kind of slink away and just, okay, I got debanked or I got deplatformed, I'll go do something else or I'll find another way. And we thought that's the very reason we exist, the National Committee for Religious Freedom, is so you can have a free exercise, which includes public or private and should include your commercial transactions too. Wondering whether it was discrimination, the National Committee for Religious Freedom has started a website called Chased Away encouraging people of faith to come forward if they've been denied service by a company or a bank. Brandon, in addition to this, restaurants are refusing to serve some pro-life and pro-family people. I don't know how far this is going to go in the Western world. It may go a whole lot further. It might. This is their way of marginalizing us, and the way they're doing it is demonizing us, saying that we're the intolerant, the hateful and creating a subhuman persona of us. And that's exactly what they did in Nazi yeah, Germany or yeah. anytime. You make someone a subhuman, and what they're doing right now, they're doing it to not only Bible-believing Christians, but they're doing it to the Jewish remnant that's in America as well. When you can demonize somebody, then it opens it up to soft persecution and eventually legal persecution. We've seen incidences where restaurants will not serve not just conservatives, but they're anti-abortion, pro-life, even down to if we oppose the transgender movement, right. if we oppose the LGBT movement, they're not going to serve us. Here's the thing. There's no legal ramifications for them doing it. It's flat out discrimination, and yet the courts will not pick up the cases. The DAs will not pick up the cases. Be sure to catch Brandon Holthouse's prophecy updates online. Brandon, give the best locations. I know you're on Rumble, but how do they find you on Rumble? And I know you have to be careful on some other platforms we won't name because issues are so sensitive. You can go to our website, rockharborchurch.net, and there's a list of all the sites that we're on. You can follow through that. Or if you want to go to Rumble, it's RHC Bakersfield. We're on BitChute, and we're limited on YouTube because we have another strike currently. We're being shadow banned, so we're trying to get away from YouTube. To make it easy for everybody, just go to our website, rockharborchurch.net. One more point in my list of 10, and I'm only able to highlight four or five here, but the decline of America. Okay, we're all grieved at seeing that. If we're headed towards global government, there's not going to be any prominent nation anywhere. But the decline of America, the rise of radical liberalism, and the lack of a world leader. And, you know, I stop to think, Brandon, right now, who on the planet is a global leader. And I come up with simply no one. Right. It's almost like a leadership vacuum. That's not an accident. No. Because the chaos that the globalist elites and the leftists are causing, not only in America, but around the world, where they're going to crash economies, they're going to crash the American economy with this stupid green deal thing that they're doing, where you cut yourself off from fossil fuels, it's going to destroy economies around the world. And we already have seen countries be destroyed. Once they introduce all this chaos, it gives people an incentive to say, I need somebody to figure this out, to put this back together, to get our economics situated and stop the chaos. And I think it's a total setup for the Antichrist. Absolutely. No doubt about it. It's just a perfect setup for the Antichrist. It's tough to watch, though. Many people are super grieved at some of the things we've observed, particularly in the last two years, but really the last 20, 30 years. In more recent times here, the progressives, they're attempting to accomplish what every other socialist slash communist country has. 
destroy the middle class, obtain unending power, create a permanent welfare state, and create total dependence. And yeah. you can't have a superpower when the goal is global government. Why don't yeah. you wrap things up, Brandon? We've got about two minutes left. And again, I want to invite you folks to either come on out or live stream. Understanding the Times, Thursday, January 19th, MarkHenryMinistries.com, or come on out to Revive Church on West Broadway in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota, 7 p.m. to 9 p.m. Central Time. Why don't you wrap things up? Sure. We've talked about all these different subjects. A lot of them are just negative, and it's hard to bear, and it's hard to watch the United States collapse and the world collapse. But this is part of understanding prophecy. The prophets of old, they were the social monitors of the day. They would call things out for what they are. And that's what you and I are trying to do is saying this is what's going down, and this is the direction it's heading. So prophecy has a bittersweet aspect to it. The bitterness is watching things collapse around you, but there's a sweetness involved. Mm -hmm. The sweetness is we're getting close to seeing the Lord in the rapture. And then past the tribulation, we're going to see the Lord set up his kingdom. We're going to be a part of that. And it's going to be an age of righteousness and holiness. And that's what we have to look forward to. But in the meantime, we're going to see some bad stuff. What the call is for us and everyone out there is we need to rise to the occasion. This is not a time to shrink back and be afraid. This is a time to get the truth out and to be in the gap while everyone else is not with us. The apostasy is happening. The church is not really with you. It's a small remnant that are getting the truth out. And we need everybody in this fight, all hands on deck. People will say, well, what's the point of fighting? It's all going to go to the tribulation anyway. You're not accountable for that. You're accountable for being salt and light. Mm -hmm. You're accountable for completing your mission in life. We need to do that. And that's my admonition to everyone out there. We need you in the battle. Hopefully you'll join it and get the big rewards when it's all said and done. We're so very late in the game as it concerns the lateness and God's timetable, what he has planned out for the last of the last days. So it's a privilege and a challenge to be born for such a Sagar <laughs>